Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another interview series. My name is Mohair from Vancouver, BC. And today I have the privilege to interview Megan Newhouse from Chicago, but she's currently in Michigan. Hi, Megan. How are you doing? Hi, Mohair. I'm doing really well today. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for being here. So, Megan, you are the CEO of Inspirant Group. So can you tell us more about your journey and how you ended up being the CEO of the company? Yeah, you know, it's it's a bunch of good luck, I believe. I um, I am an instructional designer by trade. So mm -hmm. I grew up doing um, adult learning, uh, mostly in IT. So I would take, you know, any sort of new technology or new process that the IT department would roll out and I'd create the learning solution. So training or job aids, change management that went around. But I really enjoyed doing that uh, for much of my career. Um, about, gosh, now almost 10 years ago, I went out on my own and started um, just an independent learning and development consulting boutique um, called Colette Allen Consulting. I focused on, you know, everything I'd done for my career. Really enjoyed it. It was fun. It was, I learned a lot. It was definitely a growing experience, but I always wanted to be more than just me. Um, I named it Colette Allen because I wanted, I wanted to have a company. I wanted to grow something. I wanted to have a culture and a team, but I just needed that right business partner yeah. and enter my friend Amir. Um, Amir and I have known each other since college. Our spouses actually went to college together, but we hung out and we were friends, known each other for 20 years. And in 2016, Amir came to me and he's like, I want to start a new consulting business and I want you to come with me. And I, you know, we're at lunch and it took me all of 30 seconds to be like, yeah, let's do this. This sounds great. This is exactly what I want to do. So um, I found the business partner I always wanted and needed in Amir, and that was four years ago now, and we have just had such a blast. So I helped start the company. I was the chief people officer, so focused around hiring and people development and the culture of the company. I'm also still running the learning and development service line for Inspirant Group, so we do provide those services to our clients around training and implementation for new process and technology. Um, and then, gosh, about a year ago, Amir came to me and our other partner, Chris, and he was like, you know, I think after some time, it's probably good to have good leadership, someone new in charge, new ideas. Which one of you wants to be CEO next? And Amir and I, or Chris and I kind of look at each other and we're like, uh, no thanks. But um, it was probably six months after that when we were really in the low point of the pandemic, the company, um, I would say we were at our lowest point to date. And I went to Chris and Amir and I said, I now's the time. I'm ready. I'm ready to take over. I'm ready to lead us to whatever the next chapter looks like for the organization. And they were both really supportive. The whole team has been really supportive. So um, I took over in September and um, it has been so fun. Everyone keeps asking me, what's, what's been the hardest part of your transition? I'm like, it hasn't been hard. Maybe I'm missing something, but um, it's been fun. The team is really great. Everyone wants me to be successful. They believe in the vision and the mission of the company. So we're really excited. We're entering our fifth year of business, and I think the future looks bright. It's important to have, you know, alignment between the leadership and the employees. So my first question for you is, you know, how important is that alignment to be or why before alignment, maybe why job seekers need to know who they are so that they can know how they can align their values with the company values that they are working. Oh, Meher, that is my favorite thing to talk about. So um, about gosh, I think it was about four years ago now, maybe three and a half, I was asked to speak at a women in tech breakfast. And the question was, if you could tell yourself, you know, five years ago, something that you knew now, if you could tell yourself then, what would you tell yourself? And that was my topic. It was, the title is figure yourself out. And I think it's so, I mean, that's, to me, that's the secret of life is knowing who you are and knowing what you like to do and knowing what success feels like to you. Doesn't matter what it looks or feels like to anybody else but really what it feels like and looks like to you and knowing what your values are and knowing what your strengths are and um, knowing what you're not good at, but being okay with that. It's okay to say, I don't know, or I don't understand, or I don't get that. Yeah. So it is so important. And I think, you know, for me personally, and I think also for our company, 2020 was just such a year of reflection mm -hmm. um, of really digging deep and figuring out what, what matters to you most, where you want to spend your time, what's important. Um, and so I really hope that, you know, everyone, including job seekers, took the time to do that and figure out what's really important to them. Because if you have that clear vision, you know, talking about manifesting things might be a little bit hokey for your show. But really, if you for me, it's like intuition, trusting your gut. That's just really knowing yourself well. So if you really know who you are and understand yourself, 
you're going to be putting out there to the universe or to, you know, employers or whomever, what it is that you want and you need, and you're going to find that right fit. So is there any, honestly, the, I'm yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, is there any process like people can identify their value or is there any books that you recommend that people can read maybe to help them? So the way I did it was with, with my dog here. Oh, there he goes laying down. So we, so we got him about um, over five years ago and I started, that was really the first time I started um, taking him for walks by myself. And when I first started doing that, I'd listen to the podcast or I'd listen to a book on, you know, audiobook. Um, I'd listen to music. I would continue to distract myself. And after a while, I just kind of ran out of things to listen to. And so I just, I just walked with my thoughts and walked by myself. And really, Mahara, that's what I was going to say before you ask me this next question. The way, I think the best way to do that is really to just get quiet with yourself, whatever that is. It's yeah. so easy. There are so many ways to distract ourselves. Here, here's, you know, culprit number one, right? Um, but there's no good with that because when you're doing that, you're seeing other people's ideas and other people's creativity and other people's thoughts and views of the world. When you have your own and the only way to really get in touch with what that is and what you like and don't like and what makes sense for you is to be quiet and really think about yourself. Then you can go through some exercises. There's a bunch of journals out there. Um, I love, there's the five minute um, gratitude journal that I use. So like every day, you know, that's a, that's a journaling practice, but um, it's just kind of nice to really think about what you value when you think about what you're grateful for. Um, and I think honestly, I mean, you can write that stuff down, but I also think the best way to do, to do that is just to really take a step back and be like, what do I really enjoy doing? When am I the happiest? When do I feel the most fulfilled? When do I feel inspired? You know, what drains my energy? What, when do I feel like upset and depressed, you know, and, and try to find those things that really suit your life. Cause it is, it's, you have one life, you yeah, know, one life. <laughs> one life, right? Especially yeah. now after COVID, I think everyone is reflecting what they want to do or how they want to proceed after it. But do you think that after people knowing their values, that it should, there should be 100% alignment with the company they are working or 80% or it all depends. And now that everyone is out, they just need a job to pay their bills. So maybe they're kind of deviating before they found. So what are your thoughts? It's hard. I don't know the percentage though. I think if you are working somewhere where your values are not aligned in any way, it's going to be challenging for you. And it's going to be, it's going to be tiring. Um, you know, one of the um, assessments that we offer with our organization is called the DISC assessment, and it's mm -hmm. just a communication style assessment. You're familiar with it. There's a bunch of them out there. We have four quadrants and you fall into this quadrant. And we talk about, you know, if you're a certain way outside of work versus the way you are at work, you're doing this thing called flexing. And the further your numbers are apart, you know, in this assessment, the more you're flexing and the more exhausting that really is. And the more um, work you're not is bringing gonna... your authentic self to work. Totally. Work's going to be challenging. You're, you're going to dread it because you can't, because you're not being yourself. It's You're going to be the person that wakes up or, or the person who suffers from the Sunday scaries. <laughs> yeah. Or wakes up, you know, in the morning going, God, I don't want to do this. Ah, uh, you know, and yeah. that's stressful. That leads to stress. That leads to anxiety. That leads For to sure. poor health, mental health and physical health. I mean, all of that stuff is bad. So I think, yes, you can work somewhere where your values don't align. I think that it can be a temporary fix. And I understand right now, especially with unemployment so high, some people might need to do that. Yeah. Um, but if you know that and you have your eyes set on the future, not that I'm saying people should job hop or anything like that, but really, you know, doing what's best for you, sometimes it means doing what's best in the moment. And sometimes it means doing what's best long-term. And um, you have to be able also to kind of forgive yourself for what you do when you're in survival mode. For sure. um, and sometimes you have to make those sacrifices to get to where you're headed next. Those are great conversation and great tips. Thank you, Megan. So for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Megan a couple of questions and they will be posted on the whole week. So it will be like a journey. You can watch all the videos, some of the videos, whatever you like. You can like and share them. If you have any other thoughts, please leave comments below and tune in next time for another great question with Megan.